بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم آئی ایم ربیا اینڈ آن بیہاف آف افاق آن لائن لرننگ پلیٹ فارم آئی ویلکم آل آف یو ٹو دس ویڈیو لیسن ان دس ویڈیو لیسن وی ول کور نیو افاق سن سیریز انگلش گریٹ فائیو دس ویڈیو لیسن از فار یو ایف یو آر اے اسٹوڈنٹ اے ٹیچر اور اے پیرنٹ بفور وی اسٹارٹ دا ویڈیو لیسن I want to share a fact with parents and teachers about what makes a FAQ learning experience unique. We know that planning is fundamental to successful teaching and learning. Therefore, a FAQ has provided you academic calendars for each subject of each grade. Each academic calendar has three periodic terms, first term, second term, and third term. Each term has two periodic units. That is to say, there are six periodic units in total in each academic calendar. Moreover, there are six weeks in each periodic unit, as you can see in the academic calendar of the first unit of grade five. Five of these weeks have been allocated for teaching and learning, whereas sixth one has been reserved for assessment. In the same way, each periodic unit has six weeks. There are 36 weeks in total. 30 of them are for teaching and learning, whereas six of them are for assessment. That's not all. On the basis of academic calendars and subject weightages, we have also provided you suggested timetables. For example, in this timetable, you can see that we have allocated seven periods for English. This allocation of periods to the subject English has been based on the subject weightage and also the academic calendars. Let's start textbook unit one. Dear students, are you ready for an exciting lesson? All right, before we start this lesson, I want to tell you that textbook unit one will be covered in two weeks, week one and week two of unit one of term one. The title of unit one is An Orphan's Eid, and there will be 16 SLOs in this unit altogether. As I have already told you that in each periodic week, there are seven periods allocated for English. So we will start with the first period of unit one. Let's start the first period of unit one. As I have already mentioned that in each week of a unit, there are seven periods allocated for English. So this is the first period of unit one. At the end of this lesson, students will be able to introduce themselves to each other as this is the first English period of grade five. Complete methodology to cover this SLO has been given in DLP one. This DLP should be covered on the first day of the first week of first unit of term one. Dear students, as this is the first day of grade five, I would like you to introduce yourself to your class fellows and your teacher. You can introduce yourself by answering the following questions. You can tell them their name. You can also tell them where were you born and how many brothers or sisters do you have? You can also tell them if you have pets and you can also talk about your favorite cartoon character and you can also tell them the name of your favorite game. Respected teachers, we have also provided a worksheet to cover this lesson with DLP number one. In this worksheet, students have to write different information about themselves and on the basis of this worksheet, they will then orally introduce themselves to their classmates. In addition to this worksheet, we have also provided a game. In this game, the students will require a dice and some tokens just as in the game of Ludo or in Monopoly. So each student will have one token and the dice will be rolled one by one and students will walk through the, these lines by using their token. They have to stop at the number that is rolled by their dice. So if the number on the dice for a student is number three, they have to move to square six. And then we have to see what is in square six. Choose a classmate and ask any question. Yes, so in case you land on number six, you have to go and choose any class fellow and ask them any question about themselves. So this activity will help students learn about one another and introduce themselves to other people. Now let's turn to the second period of unit one. 
AFAC has provided complete methodology to cover these SLOs in DLP2, which will be covered on the first day of first week of Unit 1, 1 Term 1. Dear students, now open page number 1 of your textbook. On this page, you will see a picture. Look at this picture carefully and tell me, what do you see in this picture? All right, yes, what do you see? There are two girls in this picture, and what are they doing? Yes, this girl in blue dress is giving something. Yes, it's a dress. She is giving a dress to the other girl. All right, so what do you think she is doing? Yes, she is sharing this dress with her friend. Okay, now there are three questions on page number one of your textbook related to this picture. Let's answer these questions one by one. So the first question is, what values do you need to consider while helping others? Yes, just as this girl is helping the other girl, what are the values that we need to consider when helping other people? Yes, we should take care of their dignity, we should not hurt their dignity, and we should always respect the people that we are helping. Okay, the second question is, what message does Eid al-Fitr give us? Yes, Eid al-Fitr is an event when we give charity to the poor people in the form of fitra, and also we exchange gifts with poor people around us. So, what is the message that Eid al-Fitr gives us? Yes, Eid al-Fitr teaches us to help other people around us and share the blessings of Allah with other people around us. Let's answer the third question now. Have you ever helped anyone on Eid and how? So this is a question that you have to answer according to your personal experience. Now pause this video and discuss the answer of this question with our partner. I hope that you have discussed the answer of question number three on page number one. Now I want you to turn to page number two. On page number two, there is a story which is titled An Orphan's Eid. I want you to look at the picture carefully and relate it to the title and tell me five words that come in your mind when you read this title and Orphan's Eid and look at the picture. So write five words in our diagram like this. I hope that you have written five words that came in your mind when you read the title and looked at the picture. Now we will turn to page number two and we will start reading the story. All right, dear students, I will read the first paragraph for you and the rest of the story will be read in the classroom or you can read it with your parents or your siblings. An Orphan's Eat. Umar came home from school and rushed straight to his grandma. He was really excited. He told her that his teacher had awarded him a star for narrating an inspiring incident from the life of Hazrat Muhammad Rasulullah Khatamun Nabishin Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Ala Alihi Wa Ashabihi Wasallam. Grandma asked which incident he shared with his class. Umar told her the following incident. That's interesting. This means that Umar is going to tell an incident from the life of our Holy Prophet Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. Can you predict which incident he is going to tell? All right, let's see if your prediction is correct. I hope that you have also read the incident from the life of the Holy Prophet Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Wasallam. Now, dear students, can you tell me what is the theme of this story? Yes, the theme of this story is kindness. We should always be kind to people around us. Just like our Holy Prophet Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Wasallam was always kind to people around him, especially the orphans and the widows. Now we will start the third period of first week of Unit 1. In this period, students will be able to pronounce and practice more words with silent letters such as T in switch, G sound in high. After completing this lesson, students will be able to pronounce and practice more words with silent letters. Respected teachers, AFAQ has provided you complete methodology to cover this SLO in DLP number 3. 
Remember that this TLP should be taught on the second day of the first week of first unit of term one. Dear students, before starting this lesson, I want to give you some dictation. So take out your notebook or a piece of paper and take the dictation. The first sentence is, please sign the check. All right, dear students, look at this sentence. Is the spelling correct in this sentence? Please sign the check. No, this is incorrect. The correct spelling of sign is S-I-G-N. And this one is correct because G is silent in the word sign. The next sentence is, he lived in the castle. All right, look at this sentence and now tell me, is this sentence correct? No, in this sentence, the word castle is not spelled correctly. The correct spelling of castle is this, C-A-S-T-L-E, because T is silent in this word. So this one is the correct sentence. In today's lesson, we will learn more about silent letters. So open page number three of your textbook. On page number three, you will see an oral communication section. In this oral communication section, part A, there is phonics practice, and we will learn about silent letters in this section. In key to learn, we have provided you a definition of silent letters. Let's read it together. Silent letters are spelled in a word but not pronounced. As we saw in the previous activity, G in sign and T in castle are spelled but they are not said. So G and T were silent letters in those words. Now I want you to read more words with silent letters on page number three. Silent letters can be L, D, G, and T. For example, in talk, L is a silent letter. Talk, talk. In the same way, D is a silent letter in sandwich, sandwich. In the same way, G is silent in sign and T is silent in castle. I want you to read all these words and then come back. In the previous activity, we read isolated words with silent letters. Now I want you to read some sentences with words with silent letters. In these four sentences, some words with silent letters have been used. Let's read them together. Omar cut the apple in half. Yes, this is half because L is silent in this word. Light travels faster than, this, than sound. The town is famous for its old castle. Rabiha is busy making sandwiches in the kitchen. So we do not pronounce it as sandwich. We pronounce it as sandwich. D is silent in the word sandwich. Okay, dear students, now we have read different examples of silent letters. Now I want you to write three more words with each of these silent letters given in table on page number three of your textbook. After writing words with these silent letters, you also have to use those words in sentences of your own. So the first silent letter is L, the second one is D, and the third one is G, and the fourth one is T. You have to find three words for each one of them and write them in these spaces. You can also find them from the story and orphans eat. After writing these words, make sentences of your own. You can write five of those sentences in your notebook and can make other sentences orally. Dear teachers, in this TLP, we have provided you a worksheet as well. This worksheet is for the practice of silent letters. In this worksheet, a crossword has been provided. Some clues have been given on one side and the crossword squares on the other side. In this worksheet, the students will read the clues and then write the correct word according to the number. Let's do the first one together. Dear students, the first clue is, I am a stop 
All right, so you have to guess the word that will come in this blank, and you have to write the word in these squares. Okay, so what is this? It is a stop sign, yes, this is a sign. We can see these signs on the road. This is a traffic sign actually, which says stop. So the word that will come in this blank is sign, and we are going to write this word over here, S. I G N sign and which letter is silent in this word G very good G is silent in sign in the same way you have to read all the clues and write the relevant words in the squares of this crossword now this is the fourth period of the first week in this period students will be able to cover one SLO and AFAQ has provided complete methodology to cover this SLO in DLP 4. This DLP should be taught on the third day of the first week of first unit of term 1. Dear students, this is Umar and this is Ihtisham. They are talking about something. Let's listen to them. Umar says, Assalamu alaikum Ihtisham, how are you? And Ihtisham says, Wa alaikum as -salam. I am fine, thank you, and you. All right, so in these dialogues, they are greeting each other. Omar has greeted Ihtisham by saying, Assalamu alaikum, and Ihtisham replied, Wa alaikum as -salam. There are different greeting words in different parts of the world, for example, hi, hello, and so on. But in Muslim countries and in Pakistan generally, we say, Assalamu alaikum. And Umar has also asked Itisham how he is. And Itisham also has asked about his health by saying, and you? By just saying these two words, Itisham has asked the same question from Umar. All right, so let's see what they are talking about next. Okay, now Umar says, I'm fine too, but why are you always late for school? It is not good to make it a habit. All right, and Itisham replies, you are right, I always try to come on time, but I can't manage it. All right, so they are talking about punctuality. All right, so Umar says, what time do you get up in the morning? And Ihtisham replies, I usually get up from bed around 7 o'clock. Umar says, I see, you should rise early and get benefits of early rising. Ihtisham says, would you mind explaining those benefits? And Umar says, if you get up early in the morning, you can take a bath early and have breakfast on time so you can get ready for school and make it on time. Yes, you are right. I will try to get up early tomorrow. And Umar says, that's good. And Ihtisham says, thank you. See you later. So in this dialogue, there are two friends, Umar and Ihtisham, and they are talking about the importance of coming to school in time. I hope that all of you are punctual and you always reach the school in time. This dialogue has been provided on textbook page number 3 and 4. I want you to practice this dialogue in pairs. I hope that you have read the dialogue in pairs. Now, I want you to make a role play of your own. The topic for this role play is expressions for greeting on any birthday occasion. So one of you will be a birthday boy or a birthday girl and the other one is going to greet him or her on their birthday. You can take about five minutes to prepare and after that you have to present this role play in front of your class. And if you are at home, you can do this role play with your siblings or your parents. This is the fifth period of the first week. In this period, students will be able to cover different SLOs. Let's have a look at them. So two SLOs will be covered in this lesson. As always, AFAQ has provided complete guidance for teachers as well. You can consult DLP number five for teaching of these SLOs. This DLP should be taught on the third day of the first week of first unit of first term according to our suggested timetable. Dear students, remember the story and orphans eat? I hope that you remember the story and you have read the story carefully. Now it's time to check your understanding of the story. 
In this lesson, you have to read the questions given on page number four of your textbook and answer them. So let's answer the first question together. Why was Umar awarded by the teacher? Yes, remember, Umar was a student and he was awarded a star by his teacher. What was the reason? Yes, he was awarded by the teacher because he shared an incident about kindness of Holy Prophet Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with his class. Yes, so that is the correct answer. Very good. Now you have to write this answer and answers of the other three questions in your notebook. So pause this video, read these questions carefully and write their answers in the notebook. You can always consult your teachers or your parents or your siblings for any difficulty. This is the second last period of the first week, that is period six. In this period, students will be able to articulate, practice and celebrate five words containing digraphs, trigraphs and silent letters. Respected teachers, we have provided you complete methodology to cover this SLO in DLP number six. This DLP should be taught on the fourth day of the suggested timetable in the first week of the first unit of Tom 1. Dear students, now open your textbook page number four. On this page, you will find an exercise on digraphs, trigraphs, and silent letters. Before we start this exercise, I want to remind you that in key to learn section, we have provided definitions of these terms, digraphs, trigraphs, and silent letters. Let's read these definitions. A digraph is a single sound which is represented by two letters. So digraphs have been shown in this example paragraph in pink color. As you can see, this WH is pink and this TH is also pink. So digraphs have been shown here in pink color. A trigraph is a single sound which consists of three letters. We cannot pronounce silent letters when we say the word, but they are there when we write or spell the word. We have already studied about silent letters. Here we are going to revise the concept of silent letters. So dear students, now let's turn to exercise number two. Read the given sentences and notice the use of digraphs, trigraphs, and silent letters. Let's read this paragraph. On Wednesday, all right, so this D is silent here. We do not say Wednesday, we say Wednesday. On Wednesday, Umar visited the Blue Mosque with his family. It was very grand and beautiful. Before he got there, all right, so this is a digraph. There are two letters here, T and H, but sound is only one, D, D. So this is a digraph. Before he got there, he thought, thought again. Notice that there is no G sound in thought. Thought, thought. This is not thought. Well, we cannot say this. Thought is easier to say. He thought that the whole mosque would be blue in color. Whole, again in this word, Whole W is written, but we do not say the sound of W here. So W is also silent letter in this word whole. He was surprised when he saw it was not blue from, from the outside. It was gray. He was confused as to why it was called the blue mosque. Have you noticed here that in the word why, W and H, these are two letters, but their sound is only one, W. W sound is here. So Y, this is also a digraph. A digraph has been used in the word Y. So in this paragraph, we learned about the use of digraph in silent letters. Let's move to our next activity now. Turn to page number five of your textbook. Very good. On this page of your textbook, we have an activity in which you have to unscramble the given words and write the correct words for each digraph in the table. All right, so these are actually words that have been scrambled. And 
each one of them has a digraph in them. So you have to unscramble them and then write them in the correct column. All right, let's do the first one together. Can you find a word that has the digraph ch in it? Can you find a word like that? Okay, let's look at this one. If we unscramble this word, it is C H O P, chop. Yes, chop. The word chop has a digraph ch in it. So we are going to write C H O P here. All right, so this is a word that starts with the digraph ch. In the same way, you have to find more words that start with ch, sh, w, th, and f. Hurry up, now pause this video, complete this exercise, and then come back. All right, dear students, in the previous lessons, we have learned about silent letters. And in this lesson, we learned about digraphs as well. Now I want you to practice some trigraphs. In order to practice trigraphs, you have to look at the pictures given on page number five of your textbook. You have to complete the word in each picture using trigraphs. Write a sentence to describe each picture in your notebook as well. So let's look at the first picture. What is this? What is happening over here? Can you give me one word that starts with H A and has one, two, three, three more letters in it and that is related to this picture? Any word that is related to this picture and that starts with H A and it has a trigraph as well. Can you give me that word? Yes, hatch. Actually, this egg is hatching. So we can say that the word is hatch, H-A-T-C-H. Have you noticed that T-C-H, these are three letters, but their sound is one, ch, ch sound. All right, so th this is a trigraph. In the same way, you have to complete all the words given on page number five and page number six of your textbook. Once you have written all these words, you have to use these words in sentences of your own. So hurry up, complete these words, and then open your notebooks, write sentences with each one of these words, and then come back. Dear students, I hope that you have understood the concepts of trigraphs. Now, I want you to practice some silent letters as well. On page number six of your textbooks, there is activity number five in which you have to write two words with silent letters K, T, and B, E, each. So you have to write two words in which there is a silent letter K, two words in which there is a silent letter T, and two words in which there is a silent letter B. Okay, can you think of a word in which the letter K comes but it is not pronounced? The word knowledge starts with K letter but K is not pronounced in it. So, one word that starts with K or has a silent letter K is knowledge. You can write knowledge over here. In the same way, you have to complete this activity by writing six words with these silent letters. Hurry up, complete this activity, and then come back. Dear teachers, students, and parents, this is the last period of the first week of Unit 1 of Term 1. In this period, students will be able to cover these SLOs, and the teachers can take help from DLP number 7. DLP number seven suggests different activities and methodologies to cover these SLOs. This DLP number seven should be covered on the fifth day of the first week of first unit of first term. Dear students, I hope that you have written paragraphs in your previous grades as well. In this grade as well, we will learn about paragraph writing. There are different aspects of paragraph writing in this lesson, we will cover topic sentences and supporting details. You can read about these topics on page number six of your textbook. So open page number six of your textbook. On page number six, you can see a key to learn section. 
In this section, some information about topic sentences and supporting details has been provided. So let's read it together. A simple paragraph comprises a group of sentences that develop a single main idea. So there are different sentences in a paragraph and all these sentences are related to each other as their topic or the main idea is the same. The main idea of a paragraph is given in the topic sentence. So generally the first sentence of a paragraph is the topic sentence in which the main idea of the paragraph is given and other sentences in the paragraph support the topic sentence. For example, a paragraph has been provided here. The topic sentence is in red color, whereas the supporting details are in blue color. Let's read it together. The topic of this paragraph is most honest person. And now the main idea is the truthfulness and honesty of Hazrat Muhammad Rasulullah Khatamun Nabijin Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Ala Alihi Wa Ashabihi Wasallam is the beauty of his character. So the main idea here is that the most honest person in this world is Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Wasallam and that is the beauty of his character. All right, and supporting details are People gave him the title of Al-Sadiq Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Wasallam. Sadiq means the truthful and Al-Ameen which means the faithful Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Wasallam. Everyone in Makkah addressed him by these titles. So these two sentences basically are supporting the main idea that was given in the first sentence. Now I want you to read the story and orphans eat again and notice the use of topic sentences in each paragraph. Also notice how each paragraph uses supporting details to support the topic sentence or the main idea of each paragraph. Hurry up, read it. Notice the use of topic sentences and supporting details. Discuss it with your friends or your parents or your teachers or your siblings and then come back. This is the end of today's lesson on new Afaq Sun series English Grade 5. I hope that you have understood all the concepts that we covered in this lesson. Now it's your turn to revise it on your own. I will see you in the next video. Until then, Allah Hafiz.